Welcome back. I'm George, and we are always glad to have you here with us. This community is so strong. Today we're going to talk about making our own still. Uh, everybody does not have the funds available or the desire uh, to spend a buttload of cash. Uh, I understand that. So let's make one ourselves, and, and hopefully this will help you along the way of getting into the hobby because once you get it in your blood for some reason, you're kind of stuck. So, by the way, this is because uh, Matt called in, uh, and he's a regular viewer, and he had these questions that were unanswered, as, and primarily was, how do I seal it? Uh, it over and over again so I can use it. I, mean, how do, I need to make a gasket of some sort. So we're going to do that. Uh, we're going to show you some of our fails and then we're going to show you our successes and uh, hopefully this helps you down the road uh, to making your own steel. How about that? Okay, don't forget to subscribe, of course, comment below, share us with your friends, like the video, that really keeps us going, keeps us alive. Now, I've got a 34 quart pot here, about eight gallons, and I've got a small one here. And uh, so I use these as my, sort of like my test beds. We're, this is the one that we're gonna complete, um, hopefully. Uh, so you're gonna walk through this with us step by step. So this will be, you know, through the magic of video, we're gonna be able to take this step by step. Now, my first fail, uh, you see this red stuff here. This is the, uh, that silicone, that red silicone gasket maker that you get from the auto parts store. You know, you theorize, you figure, and there's a lot of theories out there. You figure, well, hey, if it'll withstand 500 degrees Fahrenheit and it'll seal a head gasket, well, why not a still? Well, believe it or not, it will seal it. Uh, there's two things I have an issue with. One is I'm not real sure about the chemical components. So that's one thing that just kind of makes me go, I don't know if I should. Could I? Yeah, I don't know if I should. Uh, that's one thing. The second thing is, is that once you use this stuff, it does exactly what it's supposed to. It seals and it's sealed. And once you peel it off, it's not sealed any longer. So uh, it's not really good for reuse over and over again. You'll see here how it's got all stuck to it. Now I got to clean this off. And, and that's what we're going to do. And we're going to make a gasket for this. And the theory and the process behind a still is you, all you need is a kettle large enough to hold your mash, a sealed lid so that it does not leak, and a way for you to control the vapors that are escaping. And you want them to escape. Now, we're also going to need a heat source. So we're going to insert a 2000 watt 120 volt heater element in the side of this puppy uh, so that we can use this as a still. Now wh when we do make the top uh, I'm, I'm not sure I'll, I'll go through that part. that's totally up to you because there's so many options you can put a two inch column a three inch column you can put a huge dome on the top of it you could even uh, use those brass fittings uh, with uh, copper tubing uh, you can put a 5 8 uh, and that's about the smallest I'd use is a 5 8 coming off of this. Because remember, the larger the surface area or the larger the diameter of what you're using to have your vapors escape will equate to a level of efficiency. Mm. What I mean by efficiency is in a 2 inch column and or a huge stack with a 2 inch tube maybe a two inch um, copper pipe over to your condenser, reducing down into your condenser, uh, or a three inch column, there's a lot of room in there for a lot of vapor to travel. Uh, so your efficiency starts to go up. Now your efficiency meaning ability to separate equally as you want to separate it, and time. Uh, now, when you start getting down to like a 5 8 will it work? Absolutely, it will work. Your efficiency is going to suffer a little bit, so it may take a little bit longer to run that. Uh, trust me, you put a 3 8 on there, that real small one, it takes forever. Forever and ever. But it will work. So, it's totally up to you. Now, you see my first fail, which is that red stuff. Uh, my second attempt was 
uh, silicone gasket, handmade. And this will work. It's probably not the best, but it will work because you can see it's all in one piece and it came out the right way. What I did was I put some grease or a, a, a thin coat of oil around the inside here just so I get the right size. And I used this. This is called clear RTV silicone. Uh, runs about four or five bucks, uh, just about any hardware store. RTV, room temperature vulcanization or vulcanizing. Uh, and the term vulcanizing, they should have just said dry or cure. Uh, most of us would understand that. Vulcanizing is a term used to describe a rubber, a crude oil compound or chemical by chemical process to turn it into something useful. Hmm. Damn, it's dry, okay? Uh, that's what RTV stands for. And I poured a bead around here, and then I took, took my fingers. Now, Matt and I talked about this, and he had some great advice. And I used Dawn dish soap with a little bit of water, and that way nothing sticks to your fingers. And I had a glove on, a little rubber glove. And it, what I did was I just smoothed it out. And, uh, and that way I came up with a relatively smooth, uh, not perfect, <coughs> silicone gasket. Now that works, uh, but, but probably not the most efficient way to do that. So what I've got now is uh, I decided to go out and get me some store-bought silicone, and this is food grade, so you can make this. You, you can pour this gasket, and uh, you can bake it in the oven. You can make muffins out of it if you want to. Uh, it, it's food grade, uh, and it comes in two parts, and it's a... a side A and side B, and we're going to mix these together, and I'll, we'll get to that process in a minute. Plus, I got some mold, universal mold release, which is absolutely necessary so it doesn't stick to everything. Uh, and then, in order to test this, now remember I told you we had to have a kettle that was complete, and it was sealed, and that's why we're not going to cut the hole on top of it yet, because we're going to test it. I love that portion of doing all this is the testing. Uh, testing and verify that what we're doing is correct. So before we put in the heater element, what we're going to do is we're going to insert, uh, this may be familiar looking, and this is one of those little things on, like on your tire that you, you stop by the gas station and you pump it and put pressure in here and you fill up your tire. Well, we're going to put one of those on the side of this and it'll seal in there real simple. And then once we get this thing sealed with a gasket and we add these clamps, and oh, these clamps are great. They're, they're like four bucks. And I got four of them. And what I'll do is I'll screw this to the side. And this is just that clip. You know, there's when you push it down, it clips. And we're going to put four of those on here. Once we get that done, we're going to pump it up with air. We're going to push some pressure in here. And then we're going to give it some time. We're going to test it to see if it holds pressure. And if it holds pressure, we know that it's sealed correctly. Then we're on to our next step. So. Make sure you test everything as you go through if you get the opportunity. Uh, never trust a theory unless you test it. Okay, I'm gonna get this cleaned up and we'll get, we're just gonna keep working on this. As promised, okay, here we're gonna make this uh, silicone gasket for the lid to my 34 quart pot. This looks like a ceramic pot, but it's, it's a steel pot and it's got two coats of enamel, that's the way they made it, and it's for cooking, so it will do just fine as a still. Now here's what I plan to do. See, I wanna make a gasket that'll fit all the way around this rim, and that will go on here, and that I can reuse over and over again. So what I've gotten is, is and this is just the way I'm going to do it. There's many, many different ways of doing this, but this is my solution. Uh, I took one of those boards, uh, dry erase boards, and it's got a real thin piece of like a, a metal there, and that gets, that's real smooth, and then I got some modeling clay, and I'm going to use this modeling clay, and what I'm going to do is I'm going to, I'm going to roll out about, well I'll just start doing that, I'm going to roll out about an eighth of an inch of that, and then I'm going to cut it precisely the size of this lid, and then uh, what I'm going to do is just make a well, a small river, a moat, and I'm gonna fill that moat with epoxy, I mean, with silicone. Watch this.
Now to show you what I did here, now be careful with this because I've I've already cut my finger two or three times with band-aids all over the place now. This stuff is pretty sharp on the edges. What I did was I rolled that out. Now that was one kilogram, 2.2 pounds of clay. And you'll see I've just got all I've got is just a rough circle there. And I just kept I rolled to flatten it out and I kept cutting out in the inside and adding it to the outside using a rolling pin. Uh, so I can get just all I need is something that's going to cover or that's going to fulfill my need for this circle here. And then I'll cut out the center circle and I'll leave that as a sort of as a moat. We'll be right back. We might as well go ahead and pour the gasket and then put that aside and allow that to cure. Uh, and that's going to be about eight hours. But I wanted to show you what the, this is. Uh, this is what your consistency should look like once mixed up. Now, the directions call for putting this in a vacuum chamber to degas it. Uh, I do have a vacuum chamber. Everybody doesn't. The alternative to that is, is when you stir it, uh, don't lap it real hard and introduce any oxygen. Just stir it nice and slowly. You, you, that way you introduce very, very little oxygen to start with because that's what the degassing process is for. Uh, and pour it from a high altitude, <laughs> like about two foot from the top. Just you'll pour it from up here, not down here, uh, and that should do it. That's a matter of fact, that's on the directions. The directions say if, if you don't have a vacuum chamber, uh, pour it from two to three feet above your target. Now we're on to the next part. We're going to put the valve in the kettle so that when we do place the lid on top with our new silicone gasket and we seal it with our clamps, uh, we're going to prove that it holds and it doesn't leak that it holds pressure. We're going to pump it up with some air. Uh, so I was thinking while we're, I was getting set up, I was like, well, why put it in the side here when, oh, eventually I'm either going to put, remember we talked about this, either put a column on the top and cut the top out, uh, or I'm going to put a 5 8 adapter in there with a, a worm uh, and a copper line. Uh, why don't I just put it here? And that's exactly what I'm going to do. So. What I did was, of course, it just took some outside calipers and I just measured this. It turns out to be 29 64 drill bit uh, or 11.5 millimeters. And then uh, I've got my bimetal hole saw and that's a one and a quarter inch or 31.8 millimeters. And uh, that's what we're gonna use to place this inside the side of this. And we're, gonna, we're actually gonna do that. So without further ado, we're gonna start drilling. We need me a little oil. Well, that didn't take too long. All right. So there we go. We've got one tire valve in there. And you'll see how it comes in this, on the inside. And it's got that rubber seal around it so it won't leak. So we're that much further ahead. Now it's time to put in the, no kidding, 2,000 watt heater relic. Now I'm going to need lots of oil for that. Uh, I'm going to have to set this pot down on the floor and get at it so I've got a solid surface. So we shall return shortly. Well, we made short work of that. As a matter of fact, you'll see here that uh, there's my hole. That, that Really, I drilled out really quick. I used a little bit of oil on the outside to lubricate that as I went through. Now, I'm going to put this in. It's going to be a little bit lower than I would normally like to have it. But you see, I'm restricted by this band right here that's been a detent that goes all the way around it. I'd rather have this element about two inches up. Uh, my only other option was to put it up here, which would have been really too high. Uh, it, you'd, you'd want it probably two to three inches probably no less than two inches, but in this particular case, I really don't have much of an option. So it looks like my element's gonna be about an inch, inch and a half off the bottom of the pot. I can live with that. I'm just, if this is a homemade, throw together, use any time I feel like still. So let me finish putting this together. All I've gotta do is wipe this off, and I've got a uh, 
I've got a one inch nut that goes on this, which is gonna seal that inside there. One water heater element inserted into the bottom of this kettle, which makes it an electric still. We'll be back and uh, then we're gonna test out our, uh, our seal. And uh, those more, there's always more to follow. Well, this is our results after allowing this to cure for uh, eight hours. Now, you'll see what I did here was I, the center of it, I had some extra uh, silicone left, so I poured that in the center. And what I, sub, what I figured was I would have this available that I could cut later and make other gaskets for our big pot still. So let's remove... See, I can just remove this, and you'll notice that I put, there, I've removed the, the clay. You could either remove the clay or you could just remove the, the silicone gasket. I put three tabs on here, and what those are for, those will allow me to pick that up whenever uh, I'm ready to move it around, or look at that. One silicone gasket. Well, we have finalized this contraption. Now, what we've got, uh, you see this already, it, this 34 quart. Um, I put the four clamps on around the outside. And what I've learned was, was that the clamps, see this is another failure, but we learned by testing and practicing with it. The clamps were far enough away from each other and this metal is not as stiff and firm as I needed it. So I'd put an additional four clamps around there to seal it. Easy. So I've got about two PSI in here, two pounds of, of, of pressure per square inch. Uh, I don't want to overdo it. And I've got my heater element here. Uh, and so far, no leaks. Uh, I've got it filled about halfway with water because I figured the easiest way for it to leak instead of trying to listen for air is to watch the water come out if it does and I can tip this in any direction and I am sealed and I am ready to go so my next step this ends for us but our next step is I've got this one and a half inch copper pipe that I saved from a build a long time ago uh, and I'm going to have to fashion something up here. Uh, I'm not sure if I'm going to do a dome or if I'm going to do a box or if I'm going to do just a column. I, I'm going to do something, but uh, that'll be in another video some other time. But here's what we've got a total all together, minus the copper pipe. Uh, what was it? $9 for the 2,000 watt heater element. Uh, I think I paid $24 for the kettle itself. Because uh, we were doing a crab boil at one time. I got $4 in the uh, lockdown clamps. Uh, it, God knows what these cost. I, I probably got like 10 of these for 10 bucks. I, I don't know, but I've got these four clamps and the silicone. Uh, the silicone ran me uh, about 25 bucks on Amazon. So you can see that it, it does start to add up together. But look, you can build your own for, for it's just, this is less than 70 bucks, easy. Uh, and then, of course, whatever you put on the top and how you make that with your coil and all that stuff, totally up to you. This would make an excellent pot still for those of us uh, who have this stuff just laying around and we just want to experiment and play and have a hobby and do something. We want to create something. Um, and by golly, we've done that. So until next time, as always, you know, of course, comment below, share us with your friends. Uh, Happy distilling.